Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Coffee and Headlines, our morning get-together live here on Facebook, where we take a look at our volume levels to make sure that we have sound, and we have sound. <laughs> it's Friday, Friday, February 17. Yay! Today is the thank end. Thank God it's Yes, thank God it's Friday. It's the end of the week. It's the beginning of the weekend. It is also the day in which you're truly heads to Guadalajara for a weekend of symphony and maybe crochet, crochet, just maybe. I'm not sure yet. But before we go anywhere, I'm happy to welcome you to Coffee and Headlines this morning. As always, as you know, we're here to exchange useful information about what's going on in Puerto Vallarta and in our state and in our country so that we can better connect with one another and with the destination as a community or as a cluster of English-speaking locals. Today, as always, we welcome those of you that are watching live for the first time. If you write the word new in your comment, we'll be so very happy to give you a nice little welcome. And if you add the capital letter Q to your comments, uh, we'll be able to look for your comments in a little while. And like Dan has done, had the best birthday ever yesterday. Our incredible friends helped our son and daughter Surprised me and made me cry. Thanks so much, everyone. Well, I have to say that I had something to do with that, and I'll be happy to give a little bit of a report, not only on Dan's birthday, which was a lot of fun, but also on the extraordinary dinner that we enjoyed at Oculto to celebrate his birthday last night. Um, so I think we're ready to go. We'll have some news, and then we'll have some comments on that and I would also like to comment today on a question that I get asked rather frequently and I've never actually talked about this and I will talk about it today because I wonder if you actually know what it takes for a Mexican national boy like myself to get a tourist visa to enter the United States. Let's get going. First, I'd like to let you know that Gala Vallarta Nayarit, our region's preeminent travel expo, has begun. It took, started yesterday and it ends today. Gala brings together local hotels and hotel wholesaler, wholesalers to work out deals for the upcoming vacation seasons. The event is taking place at the Vidanta Convention Center where approximately 70 travel wholesalers from the United States, Canada, Spain, and Mexico are participating in over 1,500 sit-down meetings to learn about the destination's offerings and enter deals with lodging and other service providers. This is not a public event per se, but it is a truly important one as it maintains our destination's well-being as far as as, as tourism promotion goes. 
We have good news for those traveling along Francisco Medina Asensio. Apparently, the repairs we reported yesterday presently being conducted by Seapal in the hotel zone will actually conclude today and not next week as previously announced. The crew is simply waiting for the new hydraulic concrete layer to dry in order to open the southbound lateral to circulation, and this is expected to happen sometime today. Of course, the other spot that is being worked on near La Isla, where authorities are beginning the overhaul of the southbound lateral, um, will continue for a few months. So if you're heading north along Medina Asensio, you can expect some travel um, delays and traffic for the near and foreseeable future. Now, in case you're wondering uh, how much our municipality spent on payroll last year, our municipality spent 936 million pesos. But if this amount doesn't seem shocking enough, it's worth mentioning that last year, Puerto Vallarta had budgeted 759 million pesos for payroll, which means that last year, Puerto Vallarta overspent, went over its payroll budget by 177 million pesos alone. It's no wonder now that permits and such are increasing in price. I wonder if this is just a big strategy from the local government to try to raise money wherever they can. And of course, when the state of Jalisco audits our municipality, our municipality will have to explain what the additional 177 million pesos were spent on. Do we have too many employees not working hard enough? Who knows? But I thought you'd want to know. Now, we've been commenting on the recent decision made by our mayor to remove the Secretary of the Marines from Puerto Vallarta's public security strategy, and Mayor Michel finally gave his own explanation. According to him, he decided to remove the Marines because, and I quote, I wanted the city's security strategy to be handled by a civilian and not by a Marine because people were questioning the need for the Marines in our city when Puerto Vallarta is safe on its own. Which to me, of course, sounds like saying something like, well, we removed the red roses from the garden because we wanted white ones instead. But what do I know? It is worth mentioning that there are now almost half a dozen uh, reports on the table against police behaving badly in our municipality. So what can I tell you? This is the best explanation that we got from our mayor. Hopefully not the last one. Of course, Mayor Michel could seek re-election as Puerto Vallarta's mayor for a second term in 2024, last, uh, this coming year. But apparently, a recent survey indicated that 57.8% of locals would not want him back after his term is over. And I have to wonder why. Now, this news came to me late in the afternoon yesterday. Apparently, as we are producing this broadcast, a group of local residents, largely of foreign extraction, are gathering to protest at City Hall against the city's so-called fierce urban development, which, according to them, is consuming our city's charm, public spaces, natural resources, and sustainable options. We wish this initiative the best, and hopefully we will be able to report on the outcome of this protest. Of course, it is well known out there that a number of permits for real estate development and construction in the city is granted in questionable manners. Now, whether these type of manifestations can counteract this practice or not is unclear, but one can only hope. Let us take a look at the weather forecast for the weekend and take it from there. Happy winter. Hope you're a fan of seasonal affective disorder. Okay, that's what our snarky weather has to say today. Not very helpful, but whatever. It is 24 degrees right now. Feels like 25. Humidity is at 43%. And our temperature in Fahrenheit degrees is 76. Our weather forecast for today says... Uh, partly cloudy through the day with a high of 29 and a low of 19. 
Tomorrow, Saturday, clear through the day uh, with a high of 30 and a low of 20. And on Sunday, the day I'm coming back from Guadalajara, clear through the day with a high of 30 and a low of 21. Yay! And speaking of Guadalajara, I want to let you know that the, the walk, the walking tour that I promised to you for tomorrow as a pre-recorded broadcast is ready to go. And... Um, It'll start promptly at 10.30 in the morning, as always, and I hope you enjoy it. It's a long walk. It's over 50 minutes, so I think you'll have a good time with that. And we will be uploading that walk later on uh, to YouTube again. Uh, the version that we are going to present for you to enjoy tomorrow is a low-resolution version because it streams better. And, of course, the version that you'll be able to enjoy subsequently in... Uh, on YouTube will be a high resolution version. And now let us offer what's next. Yeah, let's have some commentary. And I want to talk to you briefly about this business of getting a visa because frequently I get asked or I get invited rather, I get invited to uh, to go to the United States, come visit us someday and why don't you come to the United States? And not too long ago, somebody asked me, well, is your reluctance to go to the United States related to the current political climate? And, um, and I answered, well, you know, that's thought, it's, it's worth thinking about that, but primarily that's the least of one's concern because as a Mexican national, in order to get a visa to enter the United States as a tourist, it's not like walking down the street to get uh, a cupcake or a bag of potato chips. You see, you may or may not know this, and this is not a criticism. This is just the way we have to go about it. For starters, you need to make an appointment online, and you need to fill out paperwork that includes presenting to the United States consulate uh, well, first of all, that you have no intention of staying. There's a long questionnaire about when was the last time you were there and so forth and so on. And uh, and then there's also this business of having to present to the U.S. consulate uh, bank statements where you have to prove that you've had a substantial amount of money in your checking or bank account for the last few months. Uh, why? Well, they want to make sure that you're not traveling across the border to stay. So you need to have a bunch of dough in the bank. And then um, to, to, to actually get the, 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 the meeting or the interview, rather, uh, you have to pay or to apply for the visa, you have to pay, I believe now it is 3,500 pesos just to apply for the visa. And if the visa is not granted, um, you don't get that money back. You know, the government keeps your 3,500 pesos, which is not a small amount when you think about it. And then, of course, you need to go to the city of Guadalajara to be at the consulate for your appointment. So you need to also budget for a trip to Guadalajara, which by default, is probably going to have to be overnight, at least a night or two, which means that you need to add to your visa application the budget to travel and stay and so forth and so on. So long story short, by the time you're done applying for a U.S. tourist visa as a Mexican national, you've already spent about 10,000 pesos for the privilege with no guarantee that you're going to get a visa. I mean, if you are the kind of person that has never applied from the for the visa and you're starting from scratch, you know, you could go to your interview. The people granting the interview could be in a good mood or a bad mood. I've heard stories of the U.S. consulate being somewhat erratic in their interest in giving us visas to travel as tourists to the United States. So at the end of the day, when you ask me, do I want to spend 10,000 pesos to go to the United States? And of course, that doesn't even include the train or bus or plane transportation, the hotel lodging, wherever you go. 
um, do I want to spend that kind of money? Because I mean, by the time you you budget your plane and your hotel, you know, the whole affair, say I wanted to go for a weekend in New York, I've already spent about 25,000 pesos. So when you put that in the balance and you think, well, do I want to spend that much money to go to the United States or do I want to spend half of that and explore my own country or go to Cuba or go to Buenos Aires without that much of a hassle. So in case you're wondering, uh, that's probably the reason why I will not set foot in the United States again and why um, I'm not complaining again. It's simply the way the United States government has laid out the choices for us Mexican nationals. And personally, I'd much rather travel through my own country when given that choice. Uh, that was just for your information only in case you were going to extend invitations for me to go visit you in San Francisco or Delaware or wherever you're living. Thank you. But, you know, bring butterfingers instead. The other thing that I wanted to tell you about was this amazing dinner that we had at Oculto last night. So this is um, a double report, a little bit about the fact that uh, Den and Kathy asked me uh, to help them organize a dinner with local friends for Den's birthday party. I don't think this is uh, a shameful issue, but for whatever reason, um, Den's family does not celebrate birthdays. So this is the first time that Den had a birthday party ever. Um, and it was his 70th birthday. So I told him, Den, I am so very happy to help organize and put things together. So we've been talking about this for a few months. And then, of course, um, their daughter connected with me separately and said to me, well, I'd like to surprise my parents. And, um, and I said, right on, I'll help you make this happen. And then their other son also wanted to come in by surprise. Long story short, we sat at Encanto, not Encanto, Oculto last night and of course I was checking my phone to make sure that they would arrive and lo and behold we were all sitting in there and all of a sudden I walked out the door and I came back and I said you know guys there's some dude that's claiming that he knows you out here should I let him in and I let their son Josh in and the look on Kathy and Den's face was absolutely priceless of course we all know we all knew that this was going to be a surprise, so I asked all our friends to whip out their cameras just to be able to record their reaction, which was absolutely memorable. And then a couple of seconds later, or well, a couple of minutes later, their daughter also surprised them. So we had a wonderful birthday, and we had a wonderful uh, evening, and it was a pleasure to to be, to conspire with uh the, the Doran family to make sure that they would be able to surprise their parents. It was a wonderful night. And now I want to tell you about the evening from the point of view of the experience at Oculto, because it really is a one of a kind type of experience. We've talked about Oculto before, uh, as we've discussed that this is a beautiful project by Carmen Porras and her wife, Claudia, who used to own El Arrayan. That's where they got their reputation. And now they offer all these um, private dinner experiences and cooking classes. Now, we've talked about this before, uh, but I do want to tell you about it again because once this is probably my fourth or fifth private dinner at Oculto, and every time it is amazing to see how uh, you're constantly surprised by the choice of food offered by Carmen and her staff. You see, when you book a private dinner for you and your friends or for a special occasion or whatever it may be, you are uh, you get choices on or you, you provide information to the restaurant on what you would like for dinner. And the restaurant, well, the, the staff at, at Oculto, gives you a menu proposal, and that's how the whole thing happens back and forth. Now, I know that Den and Kathy would not be embarrassed at all to say that they are very basic food eaters, plain meat and potatoes and pasta people. So 
the menu last night was, you know, noodles and beef and potatoes, but it is so amazing to watch the creativity of the chef at work in giving these dishes a notch of culinary art and a Mexican touch, of course. And of course, it's worth mentioning that there is such a thing as Mexican food and there is such a thing as Mexican cuisine. Uh, there's some overlap there, but, you know, there is a, such a thing as the experience of going to eat tacos and enchiladas and so forth and so on, which is lovely. But then to see a chef from Mexico exploring the Mexican heritage of, it, of our gastronomy from different states, from different regions, is, is just absolutely wonderful. So last night as I was lying in bed, and, and I won't bore you with a lot of details, but it really, I, I pretty much understood finally why the ex experience at Oculto is so special and it cannot be replicated pretty much by any other eatery in town. And the bottom line for me is the experience is kind of like when you book a villa, an all-inclusive villa, a private villa for a vacation, you know, you're going to sleep in gorgeous quarters. You're going to wake up to a beautiful prepared breakfast prepared by the staff. You're probably going to enjoy some time by the pool. You're probably going to go and get some TLC at a spa and whatnot. But then at night, at night, you're going to gather with the people that you're traveling with. And these people are likely going to be people of like minds or like hearts or like interests, you know, people that you, whose company you enjoy. So it dawned on me last night that the experience at, at Oculto is if you could slice the experience of staying at a villa into these different compartments or different uh, selections, you know, staying, uh, dining at Oculto is like the dinner slice of the villa experience because you get to choose the menu you get to hang out with the people that you're traveling with. And uh, even if any other restaurant in town provided special dinner in a private room, chances are that when it's time to get up to go to the bathroom, you have to walk into the main hall and you are quickly reminded that you are at a public restaurant. Whereas having dinner at Oculto gives you that dinner at a villa experience, totally catered, totally taken care of, and it is a lot more affordable than you think. So once again, um, Carmen and her staff blew my mind. And I cannot recommend enough to anyone if you have a special location or if you simply want to get together with people that you know and love and have an uninterrupted dinner, um, give Oculto a shot. And that's the end of my quick love letter to Oculto. Before we leave and look at your comments, I do want to remind you of a couple of other events that we've been talking about in the last few days, starting with the 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 combis that are going to be at the Malecon. This is happening on Sunday, uh, and I'll put the information again in the show notes. And of course, next week, although it's weird for me to see that it's happening with between on, on the week, not on the weekend, is the Buceria Street Festival and Chalk Art Walk. It happens on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. I would love to find an opportunity to hop on the bus and go to Bucerias and check this out as it looks rather wonderful. Last but not least, I want to remind you of my lecture on Mexican songs that is coming up uh, on Thursday at uh, the Joint Co-working Hotel. It's going to be a lot of fun. I know that a few tickets have already sold, so you don't want to miss out. Make sure that you get your ticket ahead of time. It's going to be from five, actually from five to seven. It's going to be a very chunky lecture. We're going to examine songs from the traditional Mexican repertoire, a couple of pop songs. We're going to take a look at um, Mexican songs that have transcended beyond our border into other languages and so forth and so on. And of course, um, a week from this weekend, a week from Saturday is the, the hotel's fundraising event and one year anniversary fiesta, which promises to be a lot of fun. 
With that said, let us take a quick look at your comments just to see what you're up to and what kind of plans you may have for the weekend. Let's see. Good morning, Sherry. It was a pleasure to hug you one last time before you and your husband go back to the United States. Again, it was great to get to know you a little better this time around. And it's so great to see that you always nurture our morning get togethers with such great humor. Uh, Many good mornings, which I very much appreciate. Logan says, it's Friday and the body knows it. Of course the body does. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Doo -dee -doo -dee -doo. There's a question. Oh, I already mentioned this. Never mind. Uh, let's see what else. Michal comments on last night's dinner. It was such a beautiful evening. Then to see you and Kathy surprised and so joyful was priceless. Thank you. It was it was a lovely get together. Just information. If you were planning on going to the chili cook off tomorrow, it has been postponed until further notice. A shame as the charity does good work for our city. Thanks for the heads up, Mark. I had no idea. And I'm sure some folks will appreciate that information. Uh, pam pum pam pum. Oh, nice. Gary says that if you want to apply for a U.S. visa in the, for the, to travel to the United States, the next interview date in Mexico City is 664 days for now. So there's no catching that Bon Jovi or Madonna or whatever concert you wanted to get to in a month or two. Uh, thank you for the good wishes on the trip to Guadalajara. I am very much looking forward to it, particularly because I'm traveling with my dear friend Paul and we're going to get together with our dear friends Luisa and Luke that we know from the cluster. Uh, let's see. Marie says, come to Canada. It's probably way easier. We let everyone into Canada. Thank you very much for that, Marie. Uh, tan tun. Lee says, I appreciate your comments on how difficult it is for a Mexican national to travel to the U.S. It puts our gringo grumblings about travel in perspective. Well, you know, thank you for that, Lee. I thought I would mention it just in case you did not know. Um, Vicky asks, good morning. Do you know why Puerto Magico canceled the chili cook-off? The answer to that from my perspective is I, I don't know. And maybe somebody else does, and we'll read it in the comments momentarily. Hmm. Let's see what else. The dense story brought tears to my eyes. Well, we were all teary-eyed last night. It was a really good time. And of course, I had the opportunity to spend some quality time with uh, with the, the, the kids. You know, they're, they're adults, of course, but I call them the kids the night before. And they are just as wonderful as their parents. And of course, you may remember that we uh, shared some information about their daughter's wonderful work with autistic patients in the United States. A few months ago, we discussed a few things to keep in mind when dealing with uh, people that are wired differently because of autism or any other uh, situation. Uh, let's see. Oh, speak of the devil. There's Jess. Thank you for helping facilitate the party. In surprise for my parents, Paco, I was so honored to be part of my dad's birthday and to meet all of my parents' wonderful friends. It was a very memorable night, and I... I'm grateful my parents have such a wonderful network of friends. Well, the whole thing is, is mutual and it's just wonderful. Um, more good wishes uh, for a good time in Guadalajara. Kathleen asks, is there a minimum number of, of diners required at Oculto? You know, Kathleen, I have no idea, but Car Carmen and Claudia, I'm sure, will be so very eager to answer your question if you get in touch with them. And of course, I will leave their Facebook page in the show notes uh, for you to consider. Um, Frank asks, did I hear correctly that the next lecture will be from 5 to 7 and not from 5 to 6.30? 
that is correct frank chances are that we will go over the hour and a half just because the music is rich and i expect the questions will be plentiful and i want to make sure that you get enough bang for your buck we have scheduled a five minute intermission between two sections just so that we can stretch our legs and whatnot um Albert adds on the cooking class experience, saying that Carmen explains the ingredients and their history in Mexican culture and how they interact as you make the dishes. Absolutely. Carmen is a walking encyclopedia of Mexican food, which is absolutely wonderful. The cook-off was canceled because the Admiral of the Marina said no. Why he did is still not clear. There you have it. And this, I believe, brings us to the end of this broadcast with just enough time to upload today's show notes and then finish packing my bag and then heading to the bus terminal. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I know that I will, too. I'll be happy to come back on Monday with more stories and whatnot. If all goes well, I will try to go live tomorrow night as we explore the Light Festival in downtown Guadalajara for you to get a glimpse as to what's going on. And of course, we won't have show notes for tomorrow's broadcast because it is pre-recorded. Have an amazing weekend. And of course, as always, trips, occasional vacation time, and overall well-being at this house, which is your casa, is possible thanks to the fact that you have chosen to invest in buy me a coffee with a membership or the occasional gift of a coffee or two. I am deeply grateful for that. Have a great weekend and I'll see you soon. Yay!